Sponsorship for this program provided by the Ed and Don DeCarbo Funeral Home and Crematory Incorporated with two locations, 941 South Mill Street, Newcastle and 3000 Wilmington Road, Neshanic Township.
justice, with tenderness, you shall. Good afternoon. I'm your lector, Cindy Moore. Today is Monday, the third week of Lent. The Mass intention is for George and Vi Janovic. Please stand to pray the Angelus and the prayer to St. Michael. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived in the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our entrance hymn will be hymn number 484, Hosea, verses 1 and 2, and at the end of the Mass, we will sing the third verse. we to others call. Long have I waited for your coming home to me and living deeply our new life. The wilderness will lead you to your 
heart where I will speak integrity and justice with tenderness you shall know long have I waited for your coming home to me and living deeply our new life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace and the peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather here today, we continue our journey of Lent to Easter. Let us thank the Lord for his love, and also we seek God's mercy and pardon. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with our Heavenly Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. May your unfailing compassion, O Lord, cleanse and protect your church, and since without you she cannot stand secure, may she be always governed by your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman, the army commander of the king of Aram, was highly esteemed and respected by his master. For through him the Lord had brought victory to Aram. But valiant as he was, the man was a leper. Now the Arameans had captured in a raid on the land of Israel a little girl who became the servant of Naaman's wife. If only my master would present himself to the prophet in Samaria, she said to her mistress, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went and told his lord just what the slave girl from the land of Israel had said. Go, said the king of Aram, I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman set out, taking along ten silver talents, six thousand gold pieces, and ten festal garments. To the king of Israel he brought the letter, which read, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When he read the letter, the king of Israel tore his garments and exclaimed, Am I a god with power over life and death, that this man should send someone to me to be cured of leprosy? Take note. You can see he is only looking for a quarrel with me. Then Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his garments. He sent word to the king, why have you torn your garments? Let him come to me and find out that there is a prophet in Israel. Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. The prophet said, sent him the message, Go and wash seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will heal, and you will be clean. But Naaman went away angry saying, I thought that he would surely come out and stand there to invoke the Lord his God and would move his hand over the spot and thus cure the leprosy. Are not the rivers of Damascus, the Abana, and the Farpar better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be cleansed? With this, he turned about in anger and left. But his servants came up and reasoned with him. My father, they said, 
If the prophet had told you to do something extraordinary, would you not have done it? All the more now, since he said to you, wash and be clean, should you do as he said? So Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. He returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? As the hind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Then will I go in to the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I hope in the Lord, I trust in his word. With him there is kindness and plenteous redemption. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the people in the synagogue at Nazareth, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I will tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah when the sky was closed for three and a half years and a severe famine spread over the entire land. Now, it was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, well then, they were filled with fury. Uh, they rose up, they drove him out of the town. They led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him head down, headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and he went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Again, let's praise the Lord as we gather here today. Uh, there is just so much we can reflect on. Uh, it's overwhelming, but when you think about some of the things we want to reflect on is that uh, what Jesus says, no prophet is without honor except in his own native place. Eh, let's think about how that is so true, you know, that 
in one's own household, for example, uh, with, within one's family, uh, with one's friends, you know, things are being said, words of wisdom being said, and yet family members and friends in that household or whatever would say, where do you get all this? Don't tell me this. And yet somebody else says something similar in some other uh, experience. Oh, look at what they said. You should listen to them. Or maybe they're famous. They might have said the same words or sent the same message as somebody at home with your own family and friends, but it's not taken as like, oh, you should be listened to because, well, you're not famous. You know, you're not a celebrity. You're not well-known. Like, what are you talking about? You know, again, it could be the similar message. So we have to be aware of that sometimes in our own in our own lives. So there are people that we work with or we're, we, we live with or, or friends. They're saying things maybe to encourage us or help us or maybe even criticize us uh, so as to help us to become better people. But do we really listen to that? Or do we say, stop talking to me. I don't want to hear what you have to say. So again, how do we know the Lord is not speaking through them? Huh? So just keep that in mind, you know. But sometimes people will listen to somebody that they don't know, they didn't grow up with them. Oh, they have like greater credence, greater credibility. So just be aware of that, my friends in Christ. We all need to be aware of these things. Um, also, what's very interesting is that in these scripture passages, we're finding that a lot of people at the time of Jesus, they were not even Jewish, but they were putting their faith in Jesus. And so Jesus points that out. He says, you know, like he's trying to preach to his own people. He was a Jew, and yet there were people that they, they wouldn't want to listen to him. But these foreigners, these non-Jewish people, what we would call Gentiles, they're the ones putting faith in Jesus. Very interesting. And so that's why when you think about it, even though Jesus has come to minister to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, he actually ends up ministering to people who were the other people other than the Israelite people in addition, the Gentiles, the non-Jews. And so that's why, you know, we have the Catholic Church today when you think about it, because that the Christianity didn't just stick around in Israel where Jesus grew up. It went all over the world. The non-Jewish places, we would call them Gentiles. That's why we have the Catholic Church today all over the world. Uh, Catholic meaning universal. So think about that that people put their faith in Jesus, even though they weren't even Jewish, they were putting their faith. Lots of foreigners, okay? Uh, so we think about this, and we also, the other aspect I wanted to bring out today is that we have to be careful how we pray or to reflect on how God is responding to us. You see, this um, Naaman wanted to get cured but it wasn't the way he expected he should be cured. He thought there was going to be some other way, and yet he was being told by Elisha the prophet, just go in the water and you'll be, it'll be fine. Well, he was looking for something else, perhaps, like didn't think it was good enough, and yet it was an answer to his concern. It just didn't happen in the way that maybe he was thinking it was going to happen. Very similar to our prayers, huh? You know, we might say, for example, that you were in a situation and you said, Lord, you know, there are people in my life that um, maybe these relationships I need to somehow get away from or break off, you know, um, whatever it might be. Maybe they weren't always the most um, positive or, uh, but then what happens is the next thing you know, uh, as you're praying for that, that somehow like those relationships would come to an end or break off or whatever, that maybe you're, you're, uh, you're working in a certain area and uh, your corporation tells you, you know, you're going to move, you know, to another state. And then you're mad about it because you have to move from one state to the other. And yet, maybe that was an answer to your prayers, that by you moving to another state, you wouldn't necessarily have these people in your life uh, that maybe weren't really good for your relation, you know what I'm saying? So, again, you might get mad and say, oh, wait a second, I prayed about this. But God is saying, well, you prayed 
to get these relationships maybe broken off. So I'm sending you in another state because that's the only way that's going to work. So again, be careful what we pray for. And, and you know, because we're going to get an answer from God, it may not be the one that we expect, but be careful what we pray for because, you know, God is going to respond. But again, you know, it's just you have to be open to how that response is going to be. Just like Naaman had to be open to the way in which he was going to get cured. It wasn't what he expected at first, but it happened and he did get cured. So again, lots of tidbits of, for reflection today, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's take whatever these all are and somehow apply them into our lives or our situations. May God be with us and bless us all. Father in heaven, we now come to you as we offer our prayers for the needs of your people. That Christ may send forth his light and fidelity upon all members of the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may grant civic leaders insight and compassion in caring for society's most vulnerable populations, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That peace may prevail in areas of the world that experience civil unrest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this faith community may encounter Christ's healing presence in every need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who have died in the light of faith may be judged mercifully and welcomed into the Lord's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. Prayer. For George and Vi Jan Janovic, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For, your own and special, for your own special intentions, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Now let us pray our parish prayer found in the back cover of the hymnal. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus you, told you told us where your treasure is, there your heart is also. The parish of Holy Spirit treasures our faith in you, our children, and every person who gathers here. Help us to have the courage to sacrifice, to love, and to build in your name. Guide us by your spirit of wisdom. Give success to the work of our hands, and keep us in your peace. Saints, martyrs, and Mary, our mother, pray for us. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread, which we offer you, uh, the fruit of the earth, work of you in hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. And by the mystery of this water and wine, we would come to share in the divinity of Christ, who opened himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine, which we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of you in hands, that will become our spiritual drink. May the Lord Jesus Christ receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer the most humble with contrite of hearts. Lord Jesus, wash away my iniquity and from every one of my sins, and please um, cleanse me. Let us pray, my sisters, my brothers, my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Father, the Almighty. Amen. 
May what we offer you, O Lord, in token of our service, be transformed by you into the sacrament of salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and the saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, found of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and he entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, by the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, we drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, bread of life, chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of our God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who would trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give unto you. Look not in our sins, but rather on the faith of your church, Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the, uh, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
be always with you. May we offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May they receive in your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ. Not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your love and mercy, through protection of my body, healing and remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May communion in this your sacrament, we pray, O Lord, bring with it purification and the unity that is your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let's bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May your right hand, we ask, O Lord, protect this people that makes entreaty to you. Graciously purify them, give them instruction that finding solace in this life, they may reach the good things to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks. Hope everybody has a great rest of today then. You shall sleep secure with peace. Faithfulness will be your joy. Long have I waited for your coming unto the end Sponsorship for this program provided by the Ed and Don DeCarbo Funeral Home and Crematory Incorporated with two locations, 941 South Mill Street, Newcastle and 3000 Wilmington Road, Nishanik Township.